Hi, and welcome back to the shop. This is my second attempt in doing very fine engraving, um, like engraving very fine graduations on a piece of metal. And if you have seen part one, which I will link right here, um, you might remember this guy. This is my spring loaded um, drag engraving point and I had some problems with the engraving in my last video. The distance between the line was not consistent and first I was thinking that my template is the reason for that but um, I made another template and I had the same problem again and then I figured out that my that these drag, these spring-loaded drag engraving points are the reason for that and the problem is they have about two hundreds of millimeter side play the carbide tip can wiggle side to side inside the housing and that's causing the problem so these are fine for small um, sign engraving, uh, numbers, letters and stuff like that, but not for high precision engraving. That's, that's not going to work. So um, I will have to uh, do it another way. And I talked to a guy at work and he's engraving the face of ejector pins on for injection molding. And he uses a he uses a rotating cutter that's ground like a three-sided pyramid or pyramid, and uh, he gets very fine, very crisp engravings with it. And we're going to try this out. So let's go over to the single lip cutter grinder and grind the cutter. And for curiosity, there is my box of broken end mills, taps, burned up saw blades, and we're looking for a piece of 3mm carbide. Um, okay, I found three pieces of carbide, 3mm in diameter and by the number on it i know uh i know that this is a this was a hand mill for machining steel so this is a grade of carbide that's suitable for my application the other two are um broken carbide drills for pcp um for pcp drilling or milling and those are not suitable for machining steel. The carbide they use is way too brittle. Um, it's more brittle, but I think it can take a, um, a crisper edge, but that's not what we want. We want a tough material that can stand to the abuse while machining steel, and that's the reason why we go for the... Um, for the air quotes softer carbide okay i dragged out the single lip cutter grinder and now we're going to grind a um, pyramid point onto our carbide blank okay we clamp our piece of carbide into the collet chuck and we index to zero. We want a um, 60 degree angle on the tip. So we swivel it by 30 degrees. And we bring it in close contact to the grinding wheel. Okay. I brought the camera around so you can see to the actual where the actual grinding happens and I can swivel the the whole dividing head up here back and forth and I can advance it towards the grinding wheel by the screw on the left of the machine and um, we're just grinding three flats onto the tip 
120 degrees apart. Okay, we roughed out the um, pyramid shape and now we're going to um, finish grind them in one, in one setting. We, we set it, we index it and we advance it towards the grinding wheel, take a cut, retract it in that direction, index it, take another cut. And that way we can make sure that the resulting uh, point is truly in the center of rotation. So index it to 30. Fire up the grinder. Okay, that was the first one. Now we index it, 120 degrees. Take our cut. Index it to 240. Take another cut. And we're done. Okay, we're done with grinding and that's the way our, cut, our cutter looks. It's really an odd looking shape for an engraving bit. Um, the, the chip rake on this type of cutter is negative. So it's a scraping action, not an actual cutting action. And um, this works only in very hard materi materials. Um, steel, hardened steel, doesn't work way, very well in soft materials like copper, aluminum, brass. Uh, brass. Brass might work because it's a bit brittle, but this is for hard materials. Hard brittle. Okay, I have a new piece. Uh, in fact, it's the old piece, but um, I polished up another surface and now we're going to heat blue or heat blacken it again. Okay, and now to freeze the color, re quench. Now we have a nice bluish surface that we can engrave on. Okay, we're over at the engraving machine and we're up on the um, template table. And I made a new template. Um, I decided to go with lines on my actual product later, or the piece I'm going to make, it's not a product. Um, to Take the lines two tenth of a millimeter apart. The one tenth of a millimeter distance is really hard to read, and uh, I think I get more problems that than it helps by going that fine. So I have lines every two millimeters. They are all the same depth in the template, and um, I think that's the way to go. It's it, it's way cleaner done. So let's set it up and have a go. Okay, let's place this in the vise. Clamp it down. Doesn't need to be super tight. But what's important is that it's uh, level in the vise. Okay, by moving the, the parallel under the part you can judge if your piece 
sits flat on it. If it's if you if you knock it down with a copper drift or a lead knocker or something like that, and the part is still moving or the parallel is still moving, there is something wrong. Maybe you have a burr on your parallel or your part, or there is a, a, a piece of metal under it, a piece of swarf or uh, just dirt, and then you have. Uh, take it all out, clean it, stone the parallel, maybe stone the vise. Be careful when you stone your vise, not to overdo it and so on and so on. You know it, um, just uh, common sense, don't stone the hell out of every piece of setup equipment. I can't stand when people stone their machine table every time they set it up, just move your hand over it and feel if um, there is a burr, not stone it. I'm not going to do the full scale, I'm just engraving a few lines to see if it works out. Let's move the table over, it wants the cutter and now we move the table up and now we fire up the machine, it wants the cutter until we see um, that there is a bright line appearing. Okay, you can see that we have a pretty nice, very fine engraving there. And I'll take it out and move it over to the bench so we can take a closer look at it. Okay, we're over at the workbench and this is the engraving we did with the pyramid style um, engraving bit. And I will show you a still picture right here where you can see that the engraving is very nice, very, very evenly spaced and the depth, the, the, the crispness of the line is very good. I think I like that more than the uh, scratch engraving or drag engraving. Okay, as you saw this, um, this really works and um, but I want also to try something else and for that we clean off one surface, the bare metal and then we're going to put a layer of spray paint on it to let it dry. Then we engrave very fine only through the color, not into the metal um, or graduations. And then we're going to electro etch it. At least we try to do it. <laughs> I have my glass plate with the uh, two 180 and 400 grit. Uh, sanding strip in there and take this down to bare metal. Okay, this looks like a good, good surface. Okay, now we just let it dry. Okay. I have my piece with the um, layer of paint on it and I engrave the same um, graduation into it as before with the difference that I only went through the color not into the metal. So the bright lines you see here is just the metal shining through the paint where I removed it. Now we're going to etch the metal away. Um, yeah, we remove the metal so we get an actual physical um, indention in the metal where we have the uh, graduation later. And what we need for that is a power supply. This is a, I built this a few years ago. 
during apprenticeship. It's a pretty underpowered unit, but it feeds out about 18 volt, volts and 1.8 amps at a short circuit. Um, we need some water with um, we need water that's um, conductive. I put um, uh, laundry laundry soap in it that makes it conductive. We need some clip leads and um, a sacrificial piece of steel and uh, some kind some way to hook up to our workpiece. Um, Our um, workpiece is going to be the positive lead here. Red goes from the positive to the grounding pad. Right now we have a current of um, 200 milliamps. Current is pretty low because the surface we're attacking on is also pretty small. Um, the paint is of course an insulator, so we're just uh, attacking the metal where we remove the paint. And that's a pretty small area because it's a fine engraving. And now I don't have any clue how long this takes, so I'll just go for maybe two minutes or something like that. Okay, we're still cooking along and the paper already has a nice brownish color. I think we can stop here and that we have hopefully etched and now we remove the paint with some acetone and hopefully we have a nice engraving in there okay as you can see we have the engraving in the steel we burned or um, etched the engraving into the steel and it's it's actually pretty deep. Um, I took a look with the magnifier, with the twenty time magnifier, and it really looks pretty deep for that short um, period of time. I um, had the electrode on there and was cooking away the material. Um, I will try to lay out the engraving with some paint so we can see it better and then we're back. Okay, I laid it out with um, die cam and removed the excess with, um, with 1000 grit emery paper and the engraving is really not bad. I'll take a still picture and show it to you in the next frame. You can clearly see in this picture the big thing next to it is, by the way, a pencil, the tip of a pencil. And um, you can see that the lines are all very uniform, all the same width, all the same distance apart. Um, maybe a bit deep. Um, and of course the material needs better preparation. Um, it's surrounded by the pits. The small pits from the uh, cold drawing process. This is cold, cold drawn steel, and the surface is under high magnification, pretty rough. And um, I think um, if that's polished away before the electro etching, that's uh, that helps to improve the process quite a bit. So. Maybe that's the way to go, electro etching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this second R&D episode on small graduations and thank you for watching. See you next time.